Third Conversation, November 22, 1666 He told me that the foundation of the spiritual life in him had been a high notion and esteem in God in faith, which, when he had once well conceived, he had no other care but faithfully to reject at once every other thought, that he might perform all his actions for the love of God, that when sometimes he had not thought of God for a good while, he did not disquiet himself for it, but after having acknowledged his wretchedness to God, he returned to him with so much the greater trust in him as he had found himself wretched through forgetting him, that the trust we put in God honors him much and draws down great graces, that it was impossible not only that God should deceive, but also that he should long let a soul suffer which is perfectly surrendered to him and resolved to endure everything for his sake that he had so often experienced the ready succor of divine grace upon all occasions, that from the same experience, when he had business to do, he did not think of it beforehand, but when it was time to do it, he found in God, as in a clear mirror, all that was fit for him to do, that of late he had acted thus, without anticipating care, but before the experience above mentioned, he had been full of care and anxiety in his affairs, that he had no recollection of what things he had done once they were past, and hardly realized them when he was about them, that on leaving table he knew not what he had been eating, but that with one single end in view he did all for the love of God, rendering him thanks for that he had directed these acts and an infinity of others throughout his life. He did all very simply, in a manner which kept him ever steadfastly in the loving presence of God. When outward business diverted him a little from the thought of God, a fresh remembrance coming from God invested his soul, and so inflamed and transported him that it was difficult for him to restrain himself, that he was more united to God in his ordinary occupations than when he left them for devotion in retirement, from which he knew himself to issue with much dryness of spirit, that he expected hereafter some great pain of body or mind, that the worst that could happen to him would be to lose that sense of God which he had enjoyed so long, but that the goodness of God assured him that he would not forsake him utterly, and that he would give him strength to bear whatever evil he permitted to happen to him, and therefore that he feared nothing and had no occasion to consult with anybody about his soul, that when he had attempted to do it, he had always come away more perplexed, and that as he was conscious of his readiness to lay down his life for the love of God, he had no apprehension of danger, that perfect abandonment to God was the sure way to heaven, a way on which we had always sufficient light for our conduct, that in the beginning of the spiritual life we ought to be faithful in doing our duty and denying ourselves, but after that unspeakable pleasures followed, that in difficulties we need only have recourse to Jesus Christ and beg His grace, with that everything became easy, that many do not advance in the Christian progress because they stick in penances and particular exercises while they neglect the love of God, which is the end, that this appeared plainly by their works and was the reason why we see so little solid virtue, that there was need neither of art nor science for going to God, but only a heart resolutely determined to apply itself to nothing but him, or for his sake, and to love him only.